The following episode of Dad vs. Daughter was made possible by a contribution from Asthma Day. Hello and welcome to another episode of Dad vs. Daughter. I'm Tim the Dad. I'm Megan the Daughter. And today we are playing Kingdom Builder by Queen Games Asmodee. Uh, this is basically an area control game. Now what we're going to be doing is we will be placing our little buildings. Megan, you want to show them what your little buildings look like? Yeah. Uh, they look like little Monopoly houses. Mm -hmm. uh, there are four colors that you can get and neither or none of the colors are green. So yeah. I can't be my traditional green color. But they're still blue. Which is kind of a bummer. Yeah, there's orange, blue, black, and... Um, Unpainted. Yeah. Unpainted should have been green. Well, I guess if you really care, you can paint it green. I'd dip them in green. I mean, you know, like, if it bothers you that much. Well, <laughs> that's just one of those little things. So what you see here uh, is the game board. The game board is set up in a modular way. There are eight different modules that come with it so you can always mix and match the terrain so what you're going to do is you are going to whoa mm -hmm. yeah so i just have the uh, things oriented so you can mix and match and you can see that these you know go together and you can play around with it so you have a lot of water together mm -hmm. um but with eight you know there's always you know replayability with that the back side of every one of these terrain tiles is a scoreboard so it doesn't matter which one uh, you're using for the actual game board you always have a scoreboard handy. Mm -hmm. um, there are five different types of terrains. Megan, do you want to talk about those? Yeah, so we have the canyon, the desert, the forest, the grass, and the flowers. That just seems kind of weird to have a flower thing. You'd think this was done in the 60s, you know, flower power and all that. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe the person who designed it's a hippie. I'm not going to judge. <laughs> so, <laughs> the game is extremely simple because what you're going to do, each player is going to get one of these terrain cards. And on their turn, they're going to flip it over. So you can see, okay, I have the grass terrain. So I play the card in front of me. And then I look anywhere on the board, especially to start off with, you can place it on any of the tiles that represent the grass areas. So, but once you place on the board, and Megan, you can go ahead and place. So now Megan has to place her other ones so that they are adjacent to what she put down for that terrain type. And if she, let's say on a subsequent turn, had uh, placed over here, let's just put them okay. like that, and say she drew a flower card, she would actually have to place next to this one over here in the flower. Or if she uh, drew a forest card, she would have to place over here because she is adjacent to the forest. You always have to follow the adjacency rules. That's kind of like the mandatory, uh, mm -hmm. mandatory rule of the game. Yeah. Now, there are certain tiles that will grant you different abilities. Now, you get those whenever you are adjacent to one. So, say for instance, if Megan's uh, house was right there, okay? Then, since she was the first one to go, she gets to take this tile. And on the back of the tile, it shows what she can do. Whoops. In this case, whoa, there we go. This is the Oracle. Mm -hmm. And what that does is whatever terrain card that you drew, you're going to be able to place an extra building on that same terrain. Again, following the adjacency rules. Mm -hmm. So the back of the um, rule book will explain everything better. And it gives you the full details of what each terrain, or not terrain, um, Location tile yeah. does. Now, the different tiles that you're putting together are going to have, obviously, different ones. So, like in this case, this one has the oracle. So, you uh, you take two of those oracle tiles and you place them there. Mm -hmm. So, when you take one, you only get one of that. Now, if in this case over here, we have uh, two different tower locations. As long as I go to both of those, I could take one of each. Yeah, and the tower allows you to build a settlement at the edge of the game board. So let's go ahead and talk about the other two while mm -hmm. we think about it. We have the paddock up here. We have two yes. of those. So that allows you to move any one of your existing settlements, two hexes in a straight line in any direction to an eligible hex. 
a hex. Again, you have to stay adjacent rules if possible, and you can't build on the mountains. And then we have the little cottage here. What is that one actually called? Um, that's the barn. The barn, yeah. So uh, move any one of your existing settlements to a hex of the same terrain type as the play terrain card. So when we activate those abilities during the gameplay, we'll, we'll yeah. talk more about it. Now, there are two terrain types that are on the board that we cannot place onto, and that is the water and the mountains. And the mountains. You can place around them, you can go around them, but you can't place on there. Now, Unless there, we had the harbor. Yes, there is one, one special tile that allows you to actually place mm -hmm. on the water. That did not come up this game. Yeah, we, didn't, we're not, we don't have that on this one. So uh, the rules also state that here's the first player marker, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. uh, good size, too. Yeah. Uh, the oldest player gets that. So, Darn. yeah, you know, I'm finding out that some of these games are actually recognizing that some of us older folks are playing uh, and it's not all you young whippersnappers that whippersnappers? yeah you don't always get to uh, to be the first player. The other thing you'll notice around the board is these are the little reminder uh, not really a hex but uh, almost like a half a hex like a uh, yeah. that basically tells you you know what that does what that special tile does on that uh, part of the board, mm -hmm. and you just place those they interlock right just like that. So on your turn, what you're going to do is when you play your terrain card, you're going to take three of your houses and you're going to place them on the board. If you have any of the other special abilities, you can either do them before you place your, your houses or after. So like in the paddock situation, you have the ability to move two squares in a straight line. So say if Megan was here, she could actually go one, two, and go over that way or go more into a better area uh, it's like use this one. She can go one, two, and then she would be able to take that tile and then start building over there. Yeah. So I think that pretty much explains the rules. It's, oh yes, the kingdom card builder card. Totally forgot. Thank you, Megan. <laughs> okay. There are what? 10 of these? One, two, three, four, yeah. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes. There are 10 of these bad boys. And these basically are the score conditions of the game because like having the replayability of having the different boards, you also have these 10 uh, Kingdom Builder cards. You're only going to use three in a game, so you're constantly going to have different combinations between the board and the cards. So what these are going to do, they're going to grant you certain uh, points so you know what to go for. Like in this case, the Lord says uh, for each sector, you're going to get 12 points if you have the maximum number. So if you have the largest settlement there, then you're going to get 12 points. The next largest is going to get six, and in a three or four player game, uh, they're just SOL. They're not going to get anything. Uh, you have the miners, which are going to give you a gold, which gold is a point, mm -hmm. uh, for each of your settlements that's next to a mountain, and so on. They all have different uh, unique abilities here. They're really kind of cool. A lot of them give you... Um, uh, really varied ways in order to win. The merchants I kind of like because you're going to get four gold for each location that you connect, either through a castle or through another location. Mm -hmm. So like in this case here, I've got a castle, and if I can get that connected down to either this castle or over here to the paddocks, I'm going to get four points for each one of those. So that's kind of nice. So what we're going to do is we are going to shuffle up these Lord cards, and we will introduce you to the ones that we're going to be playing with today. Megan, I'm going to let you pick. Okay. So we want three um, cards. So pick one at a time and tell us what okay. we have. So this one is the Hermit. And that one allows you to um, create many settlement areas to get points. So you get one gold for each of your separate settlements and for each separate settlement area. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have these kind of spread out like this, you know, if possible. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get uh, points for each each one. Mm -hmm. So that would be like one, two, three, four, five, six points. Okay, let's meet Kingdom Builder number two. Okay, there's the merchant card that you were just explaining. Yeah. So connect um, locations and castle hexes. Yep, so in this case, that would be a connection right yes. there. And finally, number three. Let's take this one. Um, the fisherman, he allows you to build settlements on the waterfront. So you want to be next to the water. So in this case, Megan would want to be like here. Do you mm -hmm. get one for every settlement? I forgot. One gold for each of your settlements built adjacent to one or more water hexes. So yeah. So in this case, this would be worth one, two, three, four, five points. Yeah. 
And I think that's it. We've shuffled up the terrain cards. Yep. So I think we can begin. All right. So to start off, each player is going to get one. They give these one little last quick, last quick shuffle. And you yep. get a card. I get a card. And dear old dad gets to go first. Oh yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's get all your stuff off there. We don't want Unless to have you want any. me to have an advantage starting it. But. Nope. <laughs> okay. So my first card is yes. desert. So what I like to do typically is just kind of have three of my houses up near the board like that so that I know that I've already placed my houses. I know which ones. I don't put more or less down. So I want to go somewhere where I'm going to be near water. Yeah. And I want to be somewhere where I can connect places easily. Um, you know what? I think I will do... I'm going to go, yeah, let's see, let's go one, two, three, Okay. just like that. I'll get the tower hex. Now, I don't get to use this until my next turn, Yeah. but because this allows me to place on an edge, when I ever ha whenever I have a tile that grants me the ability to place an extra building, I like to go ahead and put a building on it so that I remember mm -hmm. that turn. So that's my turn. Uh, I get rid of, or I discard the card that I had, and I draw a new one. So, okay. Megan, your turn. Um, I have a canyon, so I think I'm going to go, let's see, well, there's some water up here, let's do that, put those three up there. Okay, I've got uh, more desert, Okay. So, so I have to build adjacent yes. to my other ones over here, so let's, I, I can't get closer to any water unfortunately, so let's just go ahead and... Do that and do I want to place this is a this is not mandatory I don't mm -hmm. have to place this one if I don't want to and I think I'm actually gonna hold on to that now the way the end of game triggers is when one person places their last settlement then you complete the round so uh, if I were to place the last one since I was the mm -hmm. first player Megan would then would get another turn yep. so go ahead Megan um, I have desert and I don't have any desert placed yet so yeah, so you want to probably be... I think I'm going to go... Hmm. Be near water? Yeah, I'm going to go right around here. Yeah. Let's do that. All right. I have more desert. Jeez. <laughs> more desert than I know what to do with. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I want to get next to that water there. And, yeah, a little mess OCD. Uh, Houses should stand upright. Not on their side. Not on their side. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and I'll just put it there. Okay. And I want to, you know, I will just go ahead and place that. I don't know, I'll place it right there. Okay. Flowers. Put that right there by that water, and it is a juicy. Oh, whoops. I placed What'd that. What'd you do? Well, I placed that one over here. It actually needs to be on the edge. That's kind of what I was thinking. I was like, did you um, play that wrong? Yeah, I did play that wrong because I was yeah, thinking of the just last like, game. Wait a minute. This should have been placed on edge, so I won't even do that this okay. time. Okay. I was just, yeah. I was like, maybe I had it wrong. I don't know. He's going for it. Yeah. I didn't have that last game. I had yeah. the, uh, which one did I have? Hmm. Oh, I had the Oracle. That's yeah. what I was thinking. Okay, so I have a forest area. Well, I am adjacent to this forest area here. So I will go one, two, three, and I will get the Oracle now, so I remember that. Okay. Um, do I want to go ahead and place on an edge? Um, you feel like you need to. You know, I do. Okay. I, I do feel like I need to, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place that go one there. Up there. Okay. Yep. That works. Um, I have more flowers. I think I'm going to go over here by this water and do that. The other thing is I need to get spread out a little bit. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I'm like, oh, Okay, yes. so here's yes. here's flowers, which this is going to be nice because I can just stay mm -hmm. right along this water over here. That is pretty nice. And one of the things I want to point out is I don't have to stay in the same area. Say if I no. was adjacent to flowers over here, I could put two there and one here, mm -hmm. or so forth. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and I will use my, uh, my the Oracle one, and I'll place there, and I will get the, another another uh, tower. Tower. Okay. And I have to stay along the edge, and I have to be adjacent. So yeah, you know what? I don't think I'm going to. Do I want to do that? Yeah, you know what? I will go ahead and do that. <laughs> I know, I'm Mr. Are you done? <laughs> yeah, I'm done. <laughs> okay. Um, I have forests, which I am not nearby any of them. 
So I'm going to go right along here. Yeah, because you're going to get three points for it for each castle that you are next to. Yep. So this, even though she's got three settlements around her, she's she's still only get three points because you just have to have one yep. next to it. And I'm by water too. And you are by water. So double points. Yeah, you should put that one over there then. Oh well. You want to move it? Yeah, sure. Go for it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, See, sometimes you're nice. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I'm nice. Sometimes. So, oh, okay. to turn my card over. I have the grass area. So I'm actually grass over You're there. You're over here. Yeah. You could go. Unfortunately, there. I want to try to get these broke up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I would say go here because I knew by that little bit of water there. Yeah, and I would actually be closer to the castle. Unfortunately, I just I'm. You can't I, get broken with, up yet. No, I can't. And then let's see. So the with the oracle, I can place another one. You know, I'll go ahead and place next to the that okay. water, and then I can place these on the edge. Um, I will go ahead and I'll place these over there. All right. Um, I have grass, so I'm just going to go right over here and do that. Okay. I have more grassland here. Mm -hmm. So. Grass and grassland. Well, I'm going to go here. Okay. And I don't have any other. Oh, I actually am touching yeah. grass over here. So I'll do that. And then I will use the oracle. I'll place right there. Yep. And then I got to be on the edge, so I go here. Now, here's the other thing. I'm not adjacent to any more edge, and I can't build there, yeah. so I can't follow the adjacency rules. So I, now I can go anywhere else I want on an edge. Um, I think I will actually go here. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's near a, water, it's and broken up. there is another uh, castle over there. I have forest, so I'm going to go... One, two, and three. Yep, that's good. Okay, I have desert. So I'm over here by the desert. I'm going to go one, two, and... Uh, do I have any... Oh, I go there. Okay. Because that's next to you it. You have edges. I do have an edge. Well, I'm, yeah. I've got an edge over here that I'd have to fall mm -hmm. on. But i got to place another one on a desert. Here. I've been through the desert on a horse with no name. Hmm. That's a song from the 70s. Yeah. Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll put that guy there. I don't know a lot of 70s songs. Um, now, whoops, yeah, that was that. I can go Edge. Awesome Mix Volume 1 was from the 70s, though, wasn't it? Like, those songs? Yeah. Those are, like, the only 70s songs. From Guardians now. of the Galaxy, yeah. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to put these okay. like that. So the end of the game is getting close because I only have no. four left and I can actually place five. Yeah, this is how quick this game goes. And when you have those ones to help you place more, it narrows it down quicker. Um, I have canyon, so i got to go over here. I'm going to touch this castle and then that water right there. Well, yes, you can do that. Because that canyon wouldn't really help me much. No, it wouldn't. So that one did a little bit more. Okay, I have flowers. Flowers. Counting flowers on the wall. That don't bother me at all. Uh, ooh, here we go. I like this. I can go ooh, there. Yeah. There you go. You're by a bunch of water I there. Can go there. And let's go there. Oh, yeah. And That's I can good. place use the oracle. I can place there. Unfortunately, mm. I was almost. Do you want to go there or do you want to go here or here? Because I need to go that water. Well, I'm by that water anyway. No, this one. If you moved it here. You could be touching that water. Or if you moved it here, you'd be touching that water. Well, I'm touching that water over there anyway. One gold for each of your own settlements adjacent to one or more water hexes. So it doesn't matter. Okay. Because I'm just getting, it's touching water. Okay. I was just trying to help you out a little. I appreciate the help. I misunderstood. Yeah, I thought I was, I was correct. But. That's why I was helping you. Okay, so your last placement. Yeah, canyons. Um, yeah, I put one, one over there. here and then... And then the other ones touch water that I'm nearby, so might as well just put those other two right there, I guess. You didn't oh. get any. Oh, there we go. I can put one there. That's by water. Yeah. yeah I didn't get any abilities this round. And uh, well, here's the thing: you're going to get points though if you don't connect those two. Okay. Because that'll be a separate. Okay, area. so don't connect them. Just put it there and there. We'll okay. do that, and that's it. So now what we'll do is we will tally up the score and get back to you. Okay, so what we're going to do. Is 
typically we don't do the scoring on camera, but we're going to go ahead and do that anyway uh, to show you guys how this is all done. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the Kingdom Builder cards. So for the Hermits, we're going to get one gold for each separate settlement that is away. So like this is all one settlement for Megan. So that's going to be one, two, three. How many points do we get? Just and that's one? it. You get one. One for each. So that gets you three points. And same for you. So right? I'm going to get one, two, three. three. Yeah. Wow. We really did not play the Hermit card very well. Nope. So the Hermit card is done. Now the Merchant card. Do we have any that connect? Yeah, you do. Um, is... Okay. So I have, I connect from here to here. Mm -hmm. So that's four points. Here and from there. there to there is another four and points. Then here to here. Yeah. So four, eight, 12, 16. So from there. Um, I have one, two, so six. Uh, no, that one doesn't connect. Oh, yeah, they don't connect. That was a kind of a trade-off. Yeah. You, you do that. Actually, you probably, I talked you out of it. Yeah. So you probably should have, instead oh, of putting well. that one there, put it there. Because that only gave you one extra point. Yeah. And this would actually give you four extra points. So give yourself three extra points. Okay. Oh, well. So move yourself three up. Okay. See, I'm generous today. Because <laughs> I did talk, talk you out of that. Uh, okay, so now the fishermen. Yes. We're going to get one gold for each settlement next to water. So, Megan, let's just go ahead and count yours first. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Seventeen, eighteen. Seventeen, eighteen. So from six. Twenty-four 18. points. Yep. Okay. Now for mine, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So 19 and 24, that's a lot. 43. There we go. Okay, so that's the fisherman. And then now last, what we do is we look castles. at the castles, and we're going to get three points for each castle we touch. So Megan, you have three, six, one, nine. two, three, so that's nine points for you. And I have one, two, two, so six points for me. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, I think I, I snapped your uh, winning streak. You were, you were winning uh, about mm -hmm. everything we were playing. Yeah. And. This game, typically, I would say it's, it's about 50-50 as yeah. far as who wins. It's all depending on, like, the setup and what you can build by and what abilities you can get to use and all, so. Well, the fact that you did not get any uh, yeah. tiles, that kind of hurt you a little bit. Um, and it's also the way the cards come up. So yeah. some people will say there's a lot of luck involved in that. Yes and no, because there is definitely strategy in how you use the tiles if you go for them and where you actually place so that you don't... Uh, have to follow the yeah. adjacency rules if possible to allow you to kind of place where you want to on the map. So let's talk about what we think. Okay, Megan, I'm going to let you go first. Okay, um, I do enjoy this game. It is kind of simple, so it could be seen as like your gateway game. Oh, definitely a gateway mm -hmm. game, yeah. I mean, there is strategy in it, even though a lot of it is kind of luck of the draw with what you get. But kind of like a uh, ticket to ride in a way. Yeah, it kind of is. You know, you're drawing cards and you're placing, mm -hmm. you know, on those. Yeah, so I, I can see it compared to that. Um, I do like the artwork. I kind of like how, you know, the cards have a bit more artwork that, and it tells you the corresponding tiles. So that's pretty cool. Um, all of the Kingdom Builder cards, they have their own, you know, artwork for each character, and all the pieces are really good. You know, all good card stock and. The little wooden pieces are painted well and all, so I just think, no green. If you want me and to it, paint them, I will. And a game that has queen in the title, and you Oliver would, queen. Or, or I shouldn't say queen in the title, but queen, you know, puts this game out, you know. Yeah, but their color is blue on the box. No, that is true. I Wait, guess maybe this is not copyrights. queen consolidated. This yeah. is queen games. So, what did you think? Well, you won. So, <laughs> and since I won, I can actually say this, Megan. You have failed this city. Mm -hmm. Or in this case, you have failed this kingdom. kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I really like the game. It plays fast. We play it at uh, lunch at work a lot because we can get at least a game of this. And uh, with four players, 
real easy. Uh, I will say that with four players, the board gets a little tighter. And that's that. actually kind of good because um, here you, you kind of get to the point where you have to build adjacent. Yeah. You know, people are not cutting you off as much. Uh, but you know that also depends on what kingdom builder cards that come up and what you're or how you're trying to score. Uh, same things that you you said you know why you like it. Mm -hmm. The uh, the cardboard stock on this you know is really thick. It's yeah. really nice. Um, you know everything just you know locks into play. You know the board is it's not going to move much uh, when you do want to uh, because one of the cards you know says score for each basically the sector you can just pop this out and it makes counting it a little bit easier and then you can move it back in so mm -hmm. um you know it's really nice i love the fact that you have the replayability yes you know having the eight different uh, game tiles having the 10 different kingdom builder cards and we've not even played any of the expansions um, there's expansions yeah there's a there's, oh, a, there's a couple of expansions for this but just out of the box i mean you're going to get a ton of plays yeah. out of this uh, without it really always feeling the same i guess in a way it can mm -hmm. and i think uh another reviewer might have said that where every game feels the same you're flipping over a tile or flipping over a, a terrain card and you're placing tiles on there um but i don't i don't think that we've had very many games that have felt the same the no. wind conditions or the, or the uh the point conditions because of the way that the boards change and those cards change yeah you know I look at it completely different. You know, one game, I'm wanting to get as many uh, of my settlements in a line. Yeah. And another game, I'm trying to, you know, like in this one, trying to get next to water. We played one uh, just a while ago where we wanted to be near the mountains. So, you know, all that really factors in based on the boards and the, the scoring cards. So, um, it's a typical queen box. I'll mm -hmm. show you uh, the inside of that. Whoops. Pull those out of there. Pull the... Pull the pull yeah. There you go. So... I mean, you've got, you know, the nice, very sturdy uh, cardboard that's in there. It's really nice because, you know, it looks like the, the actual board tiles there. Um, but, uh, no, I turned around that way so mm -hmm. the logos and everything are nice. But, uh, uh, no, it looks really nice. So yeah. I think that about wraps it up. So we will see you guys next time. Bye. Like and follow us on Facebook to stay current on our show schedule, sneak peeks at future shows, and to interact with us. And as you can see, here's another game that we've Gerberized, so go get your Gerber on. <laughs>